Ten seconds. Ten seconds to come to attention on your own. That is impressive. Sometimes it takes two or three minutes. Ten seconds, that's good. It's going to be a good day. Good day. Uh, show of hands, you've heard me present before? Okay, same jokes, same stories. Same great ideas. You'll, you will pick up some new stuff. You'll walk away with ideas you can start using on Monday. I will guarantee you that. And it's K-12 applicable. I taught K-12 throughout my career. I did uh, K-1 one year with the kindergarten teachers. Yikes, that's just crowd control. Good luck. <laughs> and we're the middle school teachers, middle school. All right. I did uh, eighth grade for two weeks, which is enough. <laughs> yeah. It was two weeks in a day because I had to have two weeks notice to get out of the assignment. But end of the first day, I walk in the principal's office, uh, no, it's not going to work. <laughs> and I lasted for a month at high school. Most of it was elementary, upper elementary. But the ideas I've created in my career are very generic, very open-ended, easy to apply in many different situations. But this is me, up on the big screen there. Classroom teacher, 31 years down in San Diego, San Diego City Schools. And for 31 years, I have been a coach. And I'm here as a coach today. I love being a coach in classrooms. And if you don't know, this is my last talk. This is it. So if I'm smiling a lot today, it's because I'm not going to be on the 405 driving to some, you know, workshop. But th this is it. As a coach, I'm going to set a goal for you guys. Here's your goal. Walk out of here with one concept or a strategy. That's it. One. You don't want to do too many things. And let me point out, it's never too late to try new ideas. Doesn't matter where you are in the school year. You can always bring in new ideas. Gives you a bit of extra energy, gives them a bit of extra energy. So don't ever hesitate to keep bringing in new ideas. Just go easy on how quickly you introduce them. Because that, then, then you start to change too much and they start to push back. But you can change the environment and improve it. So the concept is the big picture. The strategies are the support mechanisms that bring that big picture to life in the classroom. And this is the biggest picture of all. Here's a concept I want to spend a lot of time on today. I want to talk about the classroom culture. And right now we're going to work off of this little one page. Later on I've got a seminar guide for you, but right now we're working on that one page. Here's what I've learned. My experience taught me this. The right classroom culture has this impact on students. Helps them to be happy and productive. And in my 31 years of teaching, that's all I ever wanted, a happy, productive classroom. I thought that was the sweet spot right there. It just took me years to figure out the secret to the happy, productive classroom. And that's part of why I am here, to save you guys the five years of grief I went through as a new teacher. No one should have to reinvent this stuff. It's been figured out, you, you grab it, you take it into your room, you bring it to life in your own classroom. But here's the secret to a happy, productive classroom. Can your students do that? If you can get students to self-direct, it's going to be a great year. I'll tell you right now though, that doesn't have a chance of occurring if you're running the traditional classroom culture. Most classroom cultures are based on obedience. And for the record, I've got nothing against obedience. I'm a fan. If I ask a student to refrain from making rude comments to his neighbors, I expect him to cease and desist. The problem is, in obedience-based classrooms, students hear this kind of language over and over and over again. It's just non-stop verbal micromanagement of behavior, attitude, and effort. And too much of that kind of teacher talk, and students become this. And that's not a good spot to find yourself when they won't do something unless you tell them to, or they won't stop doing something unless you tell them to. That's the old school approach. But I'm here to say, there's a better way to go. I say we build a new culture. I say we build one that values and respects and promotes these character traits. I think these four are critical to success in the classroom, success in life. And by the way, you put those two things together, creativity, productivity, put those two things together and you get the new number one on Bloom's Taxonomy. There's a brand new number one on Bloom's Taxonomy. So why don't you guys take 30 seconds to see if you can figure out what that new number one is. There we go. There we go. 
We're going to talk about using music in your classroom today. Music used the right way, transform your classroom. To play a short background discussion timer in the classroom during a think pair share or a team talk, really good stuff happens. Psychologically, music is called a mask. And what it does is it softens and pads your classroom, makes students less self-conscious about the talking they're doing. But the truly great thing is this. The length of the song limits how long you have to discuss. And when the song is over, they hear that it's over, they wrap up their own discussions, bring themselves back to attention, which is self-direction. We're the elementary people. Elementary, where are you guys? Hey, can we accept the fact this strategy where you raise a hand and they're supposed to raise a hand and attend, can we accept the fact that doesn't work? It doesn't work. Let it go. It's the rare teacher who can pull that off. And by rare, I mean this. You raise a hand and every student raises a hand and attends. But that's not the case. Maybe the first couple days of school and the honeymoon's still going on? End of one week, you raise a hand, only two-thirds are raising a hand. Which means one-third aren't even though you asked them to. And if you don't address that non-compliance, you're basically telling them it's okay to ignore what you ask. Hey, at this point in the year, it's you and two kids. <laughs> Might as well have a white flag in your hand at that point. No, you play the song, the song rolls out, the song wraps up, they wrap it up, they bring it all back to attention. I think that's a better way to go. Music is a part of the better classroom culture. And by the way, that song was called Newsroom Drama. I'm going to show you where to get that song and a hundred like it for free. I'm going to send you to my favorite website where everybody else has to pay for it, but teachers don't. All right, here we go. The new number one. Ah, some of you guys are celebrating inside. There it is right there. Now, here's what I've learned. These traits are best acquired by students when there's a bit of freedom in the classroom. Because when there's freedom in the classroom, students have a chance to develop self-control. And when you have self-control, then you gain independence. But if the thought of giving students freedom makes you nervous, it probably should. You give students freedom, some are going to abuse it. That's just human nature. The trick is, how do you allow students to keep doing something when they're doing it the right way as you restrict other kids who thought you were kidding about doing it the right way? That's always the tricky part. So the concept is, students need freedom to gain independence. Here's the strategy to help them build up that self-control they're going to need. It's called the Freedom List, and it's explained in that one-page handout. The Freedom List is nothing more than a little roster of names you're going to pin up in your room someplace. Very small, very inconspicuous. I got it right here. Little tiny paper list. And I'm going to use that list to separate the wheat from the chaff. <laughs> 